welcome in to the Runner's Recap with Coach Rod Barnes as we're entering episode 16. 16. Whew. Sweet 16. Wow. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I know. Don't we all like the sound <laughs> of that? Well, Coach, we're going to start. We have a, a little bit to get into with a lot of the okay. recent success for the Roadrunners. Yeah. But the first person I'm going to highlight is the man, sophomore guard, Jarkel Joyner, who yes. was recently named WAC Player of the Week. Right. So we've talked a little bit about him over the course of the weeks, but what can you say about this guy and what he's been able to do, the success he's hitting at this point in the season? Well, he's really playing well for us. I think a lot of his work during the spring and the summer uh, starting to pay off for him. He's playing at a great pace, uh, knowing when to go, when to try to score, when to try to get to the basket, uh, uh, starting to shoot the three-pointer better. So we're just excited because we've been looking for a, what you would call a go-to guy, guy that could get your points on a nightly basis, and he's really turned into that. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if he has any nicknames, if we can call him JJ or if you have, I don't know, Jumpman. <laughs> any nicknames for him? No, we just call him Kale. Kale. Okay, yes, I like that. I like Kale, yeah. And then also to let people know that he, uh, on top of being the WAC player of the week, yeah. he set the record for CSUB in Division One with 34 points in the last points. game. And Cal yeah. Kale. So that was on the road. That was a good win. Really good win. But of of course, uh, the next good win that we had this week was against the good old banana slugs. Banana slugs. I'm sorry, but I know that that is a, a real thing, but the mascot kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it without smiling, but it's, it's a good, fun mascot, but they, um, they came to the Accardo Center and you right. guys were able to get a win pretty handily against yes. them, uh, UC Santa Cruz. So what can you say about that game and something maybe you uh, learned from your team in that big win? Well, we really were trying to get a lot of guys playing time. It was really important uh, during this time that guys maybe hadn't played in the last couple of games to get them on the floor, make sure that they are uh, really um, ready for our run. Uh, we're getting to the midpoint of the uh, conference play, and depth is important. Keeping guys healthy is important. Rest is important. So we felt like it was a good game for us. We felt like our starters came out kind of established uh, the way we wanted to play. And then we had some guys that came off the bench that I thought played really well. Yeah, you noted it there, off the bench. I know that that's always good. Not only are you getting guys some good minutes off the bench, but getting your starters some time to rest as well. Yeah. What can you say about the guys off the bench and some of the production that they were able to put on display against Santa Cruz? Well, I thought Darian, <coughs> Darius Williams, who hasn't played a lot lately, really did a really good job. Uh, uh, Justin McCall, who's been playing a little bit more recently, uh, thought had a great game, had double figures points, and and also thought guys like Jeremiah Dixon and Bray Barnes, I thought they gave us quality minutes. And what we've got to do is continue to build on that. Uh, I, as I said a couple of weeks ago, the second game has been concerning, I mean, with our team because I think fatigue is setting in some, and we're going to need for those guys off the bench to really stay up and play a, a big role as we go forward. And how helpful, outside of the obvious points that we just made, how helpful is it to get guys off the bench, kind of find success, and kind of maybe that confidence is something that the other guys can see and feel a little bit better to know, hey, we're not just doing our job, but these right. guys are also taking care of the job off the bench. It's, it's huge for, uh, you know, just the confidence of our team. When you know, uh, if I'm not playing as well, or if we need a couple of plays, that we've got a guy that could come in and really contribute. As I said, in last night's game, we had an opportunity with – uh, Justin McCall and Darius Williams uh, came in and gave us really good contribution. Damian Durham, who's always, who's our leading scorer, he's always contributing. But just to have those guys that play well, that our other guys will know, hey, we're not going to lose the lead or we're not going to play well. And I just think overall for a team, it gives us great confidence. And of course, we just saw uh, Bray hit, knock down a three there <laughs> in the second half. Yeah. But another guy that was really hitting the threes was Damian Durham. And yes. he was four for nine behind the arc last night. And he kind of heated up there in the second <laughs> half. But as always, the sharpshooter on the team, when you look at him, is it just fun to watch him take those shots? <laughs> well, when they go in, uh, four <laughs> out of the nine times last night, I felt really good. And five times I did. But... Uh, yeah, it's it's fun because, you know, at any minute, as we, last night in the second half, he could just go off. I mean, he could just make shots, and, you know, it helps you build on the lead. If you have one, if you're behind, you could come back really quickly, and that's what we've used him for, and he's found a, a role on our team and has in our program uh, that, you know, he's kind of a guy that can separate you. That's what we like to call him the separator because as of last night, 
he makes a couple of plays and then he makes three threes and all of a sudden a nine point lead goes to an 18 point lead and you know he's that kind of guy and it's really fun to have a guy like that on your team and it was fun to see the energy of the crowd, no doubt. But more fun for me was seeing the guys uh, sitting there on the sidelines cheering on <laughs> their players when they're making those shots. And I want to ask you, I mean, it just seems like, again, we're still, I think as a coach probably you can attest to this, yes. still always feels early in the season maybe right. do you. But um, what I've seen over the course of the season from the team is everyone's kind of settling into their role. You mentioned that right. with Jarkel Joyner yeah. and then Damian hitting the threes. It's kind of like, does that feel good for you right now that you're kind of seeing and being able to really establish right. where guys fit in well? Well, as a coach, that's that's a, that's when you feel great about your team because uh, you kind of know uh, what's your strength and weaknesses. You know your players really well, but then they accept their roles. That is a huge thing about building a team and building team chemistry. Uh, early on, we played a lot of guys uh, just to try to find out what a guy can do. And then we kind of went away uh, from playing so many guys to kind of get really a, a, a starting five that felt comfortable with each other. Now we're building back the other way. Taze Moore is playing more. Damien, who's always come off the bench as our first guard, uh, we know what he could give us, but then Justin McCall to see him there in person. So, uh, you know, it's kind of during the team, as I said about a month and a half ago, I still couldn't get a good feel mm -hmm. for where we are, what, you know, who's playing, still trying to figure that out. We figured it out now. And there's a comfort level with the players and the coaches of what's expected of them. I'm sure that that's a great feeling for that's the coaching staff. a great feeling. Staff. It is. It is. <laughs> and you mentioned Taze Moore, but we didn't see him out there on the right. court against yeah. Santa Cruz. Can you uh, let us know what was up with yeah, him? We just wanted to, I mean, he's sore. I mean, obviously, it's a guy that's had multiple surgeries. And, again, it's a tough time during the season. And we think it's really important right now to uh, stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And because he had a soreness, uh, in his leg today, not where he was injured, but more of his Achilles. And uh, we just felt like, hey, instead of taking a chance, right. uh, let's try to rest him and hopefully uh, he'll be ready for Saturday, which I think he will be. But we don't want to play guys at 80% right now because it could turn out to be something worse. We're trying to keep our guys 100% ready to go. And just because we felt like it wasn't right to, to, to put him in that particular game, being precautionary against uh, anything worse happening to him. So, uh, you know, we hope uh, Saturday he's ready to go. We're going to need him. Uh, we're playing a great team in Grand Canyon, so we need all hands on deck, and we want to make sure we do that. So we set him in this last game. Well, perfect segue here, catching some confidence at a good time in the season, yes. getting guys some rest, right. but the big game looms over the weekend. So you guys right now still at the top of the whack standings there, but yeah. right behind you is the GCU Lopes. So coming out of Arizona, Grand Canyon, um, as always, one of the teams or one of the contenders in the whack, as you can right. say. But yeah. This year, I mean, seeing kind of the same thing from them as always, and they're kind of hitting their stride. You right. both have only lost to New Mexico State in conference play. Right. So what is what is the deal with GCU and Coach Dan Marley? Uh, what can you expect from them coming into the Icardo Center this weekend? Well, they're always talented. I mean, if, if you look down their roster, and they're, they're probably more talented than they've ever been. They have three transfers that are playing and giving them quality minutes right now. And, Two of those guys played in Power Five conferences, so uh, that's obviously whenever you do that, and uh, with all along with the guys that they had returning, uh, they're, they're about eleven to twelve players deep, and they're quality players. They're players, some of them that are not playing as much, have started for them before. So uh, it's it's one of those games that's going to be challenging. Uh, Coach Marley's done a great job; they're well coached. Uh, they're coming in feeling really good about themselves, playing with a lot of confidence, and they should, you know, with the experience they have. Again, having a transfer from Illinois, having a transfer from Washington, uh, you know, added on to guys that were already good in our league. I mean, the player of the year uh, uh, chosen at the beginning of the year is like their third leading score, <laughs> fourth leading score in conference play. So we, we got a challenge, but, you know, our guys are ready. I mean, we're looking forward to this. We always play well against them, and uh, it's always a battle. So we're looking forward to it, and, and it's it's kind of one of those things, as I tell our players last night uh, as we talked about this up-and-coming game. It's not going to make or break our season. 
what it can do, it can keep us uh, building momentum. And more importantly, it's not whether it's Grand Canyon or whether it's the banana slugs. Uh, <laughs> we want to win at home. We want to win in front of our crowd. And uh, this is our next home game. It's just happened to be a challenging one. But uh, we're looking forward to it. Our guys are excited. Our coaches are excited and looking forward to a great battle. Yeah, and you've been playing well at home, keeping yes. that perfect record intact yes. and hoping to do that this weekend. Yeah. I am sure. But with that uh, point <laughs> in the season to um, playing a team like GCU, does it just feel like the right time that you're seeing them since you guys are the two top teams right now in the WAC conference? Does it feel like, are you happy with where you guys are at this point to be facing them? Well, I, I don't know if I I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> feel like we're right where I would like to be. The thing is that I'm excited about is uh, we're playing undoubtedly one of the better teams mm -hmm. at home in a time where I think we need to see that. You know, uh, we need to see uh, what we consider one of the best teams in our league. Uh, we're playing with confidence. I still think we have room to grow. I think as we play this team, as we play New Mexico State next week, I think we'll get better. And to me, this is the time of the year that you need to get better. And, and again, probably three or four, two weeks from now, we want to hit our stride. We really want everything to be flowing. And I think the next week, these teams can help us do that. All right, so big game. GCU at yes. the Accardo Center against the Roadrunners this weekend on Saturday. Everyone, I feel like that's going to be, might be a sellout. That's, <laughs> that's going to be a sellout. You need to get your tickets now if you want to be there, because if not, It'll be a disappointment to get to the game. There's <laughs> Standing no room only. Oh, yes, true. <laughs> All right, Coach. So big challenge ahead, yeah. but big challenge right now. Right now, yeah. Let's see. You fired up today. So I am I, fired I, up. I, I am uh, I'm a little because I think you're getting excited about the game. You're getting excited as we follow through the year. And uh, – I'm getting less excited about the hot seat. <laughs> well, Coach, I love sports, and I love good matchups, and I love seeing the Roadrunners beat down on some banana slugs, you know. <laughs> That's why I'm feeling good today. <laughs> but we talked, um, we talked about a lot of things with GCU, yes. and at one point I've always, I've always kind of asked you is, who do you guys key on? And obviously part of preparing is looking at tape. So my first question in the hot seat for okay. you with the breakdown with Barnes oh, is wow. what are the keys to looking at tape and making that effective for your players before a game? Uh, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you want to be uh, really aware, uh, knowledgeable what the other team is doing. So it takes every pass a stop to look to see positioning. Uh, where the ball, the, what they're moving the ball, who's involved in it, and what they're trying to get, what they're trying to accomplish. Are they trying to get the ball inside? Are they trying to get a three-point? Are they trying to be in an isolation system? Are they trying to be in a pick-and-roll situation? And then there's tendency where teams kind of do the same thing, so you start to try to figure out what can we take away. Uh, one of the big things with us, and it's, it's GCU makes it difficult because they have balanced scoring. Mm -hmm. We try to take players away. We try to get guys that we feel like it could be their leading scorer or it could be someone down, you know, their third leading scorer that we think, hey, this guy's a great shooter if we eliminate the threes tonight. So in that, and then it's trying to relay that to the team. And that becomes the part that's really uh, tough in a situation because guys learn different. Mm -hmm. Some guys need the action. They need to be doers of it. So we go through work on the floor, okay? They got to pass it here, they got to cut here, they got to screen here. This is where you are. Some guys learn better like that. Some guys learn better through just seeing it, watching it on tape, seeing it on film, watching them go through it. And like, okay, that's what happened, this is this guy. And some guys do it through reading. Mm -hmm. When they read it, they receive it better. If they read it and say it back to themselves, this is what this player is doing. So. It's really, uh, uh, I think some people don't realize how much work, because then for the coaches, we have to make sure that every guy gets the part. So right. <laughs> there's some film watching, there's some demonstration, what we call walkthrough. Then also there's some reading that we give our scouting reports. And then you hopefully you get to the game and uh, 15 guys you got on the team, <laughs> they all got it. And uh, yeah. sometimes, uh, you know, that doesn't work. That's why I'm, I'm so thankful we got good help. Uh, my staff does a great job. 
a lot of times when teams go to the floor and people are like, oh, we weren't ready, we didn't play well, some of that has to do with the preparation part. Mm -hmm. And I think our guys do a good job of, prepar of preparing our guys. And that's all a lot of times when I leave a meeting, I leave here and I'm like, I gotta go get ready. <laughs> it's not that I have to get ready, I'm already <laughs> ready, but it's that coach I Coach is have always to, ready. <laughs> yeah, coach is already ready because I'm always studying. And then I know what, you know, uh, how it's easier for me to relate to our players, but then I've got to take everyone under consideration. So. Yeah, there's an art form, obviously, and it to is. translate that to your players. And yes. I know uh, probably one of the guys on GCU squad that everyone's looking at is Carlos Johnson, so I'm yes. sure that he's <laughs> he's been giving you a lot to watch on he's his film, that's for no sure. No question about that. <laughs> All right, Coach, so a, a big game for many when you look at the WAC standings and where you guys yeah. want to be, but of course you mentioned it, and as coaches always will, as they should, no game is bigger than another. Right. But when you feel that pressure of, you know, an in-conference foe, that right. has, you've been there before. How do you keep your guys poised with a game like that that could potentially bring all that pressure? Well, with our guys, uh, we always try to map out and have short-term, long-term goals, and you know, and we try to keep it simple. Uh, we don't try to get too uh, emotionally tied to whether that's uh, standings or positioning or where it may be as far as uh, trying to take it simple. If you win all your home games, and you win a couple of road games, you're going to have a chance to win the league. Mm -hmm. So whether that's Chicago State, which we beat them, or whether that's C Seattle earlier in the month, or whether it's Grand Canyon, if, if I put value to each one of them to win our home games, none of them weighs of values anymore and, and with our players. Now, obviously, we look at the standing, but we both are 6-1. and one. Mm -hmm. uh, But mm -hmm. you as a coach, we tell them to stick to what we've planned, stick to the plans. If we stick to the plans that what we had in the non-conference to what we did in preseason to what we did last spring, we think at the end of it, uh, we'll be successful. And I think if we do that same thing, so because especially now, we can't put too much into this. Uh, I s mentioned this earlier, um, you know, uh, to our players and to our coaches. Two years, three years ago, we played in New Mexico State. We were in a similar situation. They beat us at home mm. on a, almost a half-court shot last second. It was devastating. I mean, that night, I didn't sleep that much. The next day, our players wasn't really into it. But after a few days, I kept telling them, stick with the plan. Just stick with the plan. And by the time we got to the next game, which was the next Thursday, our guys were back up because we had talked about, hey, don't abandon a plan. And, you know, hindsight now, it prepared us, it made us better. Then we made the shot on them to go to the NCAA <laughs> tournament. And I, I want the same thing with this team. We, we want to win this game. It's a big game because it's the next one. Is this big because it's home? Uh, and then we started talking about seating and standings and all that other stuff. Yeah. But if we keep the first things first, uh, I think our guys will play with more excitement than they will uh, being uh, fearful or being nervous about, you know, how important the game is. Yeah, so let the rest of us worry about all that well, outside noise. This is for you guys. You guys will love this. I mean, it gives you peace and shots and I, it gives you information. Standings is first place, and it's, fun. It's, it's a great. It is fun. It's a competition. Yes, yes. And <laughs> we it's love fun the for, competition. Yeah, it is. It, it's fun for us, but we got to keep it in perspective, especially uh, if we want to go to NCAA tournament. Yeah, you know. So Eyes on the prize. yeah, and, and that's what we. That's that's our goal. This is just one of the hurdles. We, this we is get just that. one hurdle. All yeah. right, coach. So uh, one last question. Oh. Uh, so this specific team, I, I always ask you kind of learning lessons, learning lessons, you know, oh, wow. from your team and all that, and yeah. learning lessons of, of over the course of your coaching career. But what has this team, this group of guys already taught you? What's that biggest takeaway so far? Uh, allowing people to be themselves. Uh, this team is different than any team that I've ever coached. They are a, a lively, hyper a uh, very unpredictable group of guys, uh, but they're special in their own way. So it's taught me, which has been hard for me. Uh, I'm a kind of a plain Jane kind of guy. I'm a kind of 
black and white don't prefer gray at all. I'm a <laughs> kind of hot and cold and lukewarm doesn't work for me. Uh, they've taught me to allow them to be them and coach around them. And uh, that's something that I've never kind of, uh, I've done that in certain ways, but it kind of fell in the lines of what I was expecting. This team here has been unusual, uh, but I challenged them early on, and this is one of my great sins with them. They become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And they actually, they make me uncomfortable. <laughs> so it's the same but, really for you. <laughs> it's the same for me. So I've become comfortable with uncomfortable situations to guys playing in practice, to pranks on the road, to <laughs> crazy questions in meetings, to all different kind of things. But it's made it fun. It's been exciting. But I've embraced it. Yeah. They're not the team I had two years ago or even last year. They're their own unique group, but they're special in their own way. Just want to know, Coach. Um, so can be I, yourself. I was going to say, well, can I be put in that category of making <laughs> you uncomfortable? You, you, you are definitely that. <laughs> I have not come, become uncomfortable. I mean, comfortable with this uncomfortable hot seat. So. I know. So we're all teaching you. Yes. Yes, hey, I'll this take is it. the year to teach for, Coach Barnes. I was like, for the hundred lessons I've learned from him already, <laughs> I'll take it that I've given you one. You have. Along with your boys on the team. I'll <laughs> take you. it. Yes. But how cool is that, though? After so many years of coaching, uh, every year is a little different. Every year yes. you keep learning. Yes. I love it. Right. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Coach, thank for joining you. us. Um, good luck to you guys this weekend. Yes. And as always, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week for Runners Recap.